Hey there guys, this is me, T-Dude here, and uh, welcome back to another edition of Game Pickups for the month of October 2015. So, let's get started. So, uh, as you can see here, uh, not as many or as ridiculous as previous months, but still um, a pretty good showing in terms of uh, the retail or the actual physical releases. Uh, I'll get to the, uh, the downloadable games or digital games that I recently got later, but uh, first off, the games I bought uh, here. So uh, what you see here is basically uh, all the stuff that I got from two stores. So uh, one game I got um, about what, that's eight games, and another got six. So uh, we'll go with uh, basically this side here, where um, I got all of these games in one store. So as a big wrestling fan, um, I really like wrestling games, and I like to collect the wrestling games. So uh, as you can see here, I have uh, four wrestling games here that I don't have. We got uh, Backer Wrestling and Backer Wrestling 2 with Silent J or finally, uh, no, is it, is it Silent J? He's from St. Clown Posse and something, and then New Jack. Is there, I can't believe a New Jack's on the cover of that. Um, and then we have um, some uh, WWF Raw and WWE uh, WrestleMania 21. Which, um, for one thing, I didn't have any wrestling game on the original Xbox and I finally managed to get at least one of these type of games. I know there's the sequel to, uh, to this, the Battle for Raw 2. I'm going to have to get that soon or later. And uh, I heard not so good things about WWE WrestleMania 21 and how it's very glitchy and stuff. And uh, I just remember when um, you know, the WWE was releasing their wrestling games on GameCube, PS2, and Xbox. The Xbox usually got the short end of the stick, while the GameCube and PS2 WWE games were actually really good. So, um, yeah, so definitely I'll try to have to test those out later. So then we have also here the uh, really cool uh, classic here, Namco Museum, with uh, basically a compilation disc and uh, it, it's always nice to have those type of compilation disc type of games where you know you have a whole bunch of games you can play off of like you know Pac-Man and Pole Position and Dig Dug all um, I believe arrangement versions or so so it's really cool and then you got Dog's Life <laughs> which I uh, I seen um, just one video of Game Grumps and that's all I really knew about it was that they played it, and it's basically a game where you play as a dog. Um, I always see it from time to time, and like, it's just the cover of it is just so goofy. I'm like, alright, well, I finally have a chance to kind of get it. So, I got it. Yeah. So, and now, we go on to this section, which also includes uh, these two games, also. So, we'll start with here. Um, got Dr. Mario 64. Uh, and... Uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 on the Game Boy Advance. So I'm really happy that I got uh, these games. I um, I realized that I haven't been picking up a lot of N64 games lately. Um, maybe because that I, I think I have like most of the good ones that's not super expensive. Um, I do have some of like the really good like must-haves like Conquer Spat Fur Day and Banjo Kazooie, all those other kind of games. But I don't have like Paper Mario, for instance, or something. So um, I'm really happy that I got Dr. Mario 64. Um, I don't really hear, hear too much things about this particular version of Dr. Mario. Um, all I know is that it is a four-player version of it, and uh, I played with my sister. It was really fun. You know, it was really cool. And then with Donkey Kong Country 2, uh, I'm really happy that I got this because I actually had the first and third one on the Game Boy Advance. Um, I got those two games at a flea market uh, a long time ago, and I always wanted to get this one, and uh, I finally got it there. So there you go, and I played it for a little bit. It's it's fun. It's great. It's Donkey Kong Country too. It's great. So as we continue on, you see uh, 1080 Avalanche on the GameCube, which um, again uh, I have also 1080 uh, snowboarding on the N64 and played it for you know, a little bit. Um, it's kind of unique, actually, with, you know, licensed music in it, um, and 
No, it, it look, still looks pretty good, you know, for GameCube and stuff. Sometimes I realize that, like, wow, GameCube still looks really good sometimes. Um, I do remember that with 1080 Avalon, it was one of the three LAN games for the GameCube. And there was actually an option in the main menu where you could actually play LAN um, on 1080 Avalanche. The other two were uh, Kirby Air Ride and Mario Kart Double Dash. But from what I know, um, those two games had like hidden menus for uh, for LAN support. While this one was it was on the main menu, so it was kind of interesting. So I played it. Yeah, it's alright. Pretty good. Uh, we got Endless Ocean. Which uh, I always see from time to time, and I'm always kind of curious about it. And uh, I finally got it. Um, it is a shame, though, that uh, Club Nintendo is no more, because then I, I would have loved to have, you know, put in those Club Nintendo points in. But yeah, nowadays now, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's done now, and I guess now Nintendo's doing their new account thing. But anyways, Endless Ocean. I'm really happy they got it because I can finally experience what this unique game has to offer. Uh, Enslaved Odyssey to the West, which uh, I remember getting the PS3 version from my friend. I heard it was a really cool, like, action adventure type of game, or like platforming type of game, kind of similar to like Uncharted in a way. Um, and all I heard is that, like, this is just an unrated gem of a game, and I'm really happy that I got it. We got, ah, uh, look at this. But now, look, look, look at these games from side to side. So, we got uh, <laughs> Oni Janbara Bikini Samurai Squad. And also Barman Act Zero. And uh, also Lost Planet uh, Extreme Condition. So, let's go through, uh, I guess, from this one first. So, I'm really happy that I got uh, this collector's edition. Uh, it comes with two discs um, and, and a little mini art book and stuff. Um, and, really happy about it because I heard really good things about Lost Planet. Uh, I know my friend Jeremy, um, he really loves Lost Planet, the, the first one. Uh, I, I'm not sure if he has on Steam or 360 also. Um, maybe he has both of them. But basically he, he, he raves that this is a really awesome game and I know that a bunch of people know uh, have, have said that this is a really awesome game so I'm lucky to have it. And then we, from awesome to not so awesome Bomberman Act Zero. I remember showing this to my friend that I got it, and he was like, "Why did you get this?" <laughs> and my response was, "I, I just wanted to get it because it's Bomberman Act Zero." <laughs> so if you don't know what this game is, um, Bomberman Act Zero was supposed to be the gritty reboot to the cute and cuddly Bomberman series that was very cute and fun and stuff and not gritty and hardcore like this dude in the cover. So for some reason Konami thought that hey let's make a gritty reboot of Barman with Hutton Soft and uh, it turned out really bad because there's no local multiplayer while every single other Barman game has local multiplayer. And it's very generic, and um, I'm glad that I didn't pay too, too much about this game. But, like, yeah. Uh, I haven't played it yet, but uh, I, I will try to play it in the meantime or soon. Uh, just so I can experience how bad this game is. So, And then we have uh, Oni Chanabara Bikini Samurai Squad. Now, uh... Another one of those like weird, obscure type of games that uh, only I would really get out of my group of friends. Yeah, um, I actually did play this game uh, for uh, for a good like four or five hours or so, and it's um, a a hack and slash or a character action game if you want to also call that. Kind of similar to like Devil May Cry and stuff. It has like a style meter to it also. Um, I did some research on this game. It was originally part of the Simple series in Japan, where it was a series of budget games. And uh, eventually, uh, for, from what I heard, there were some good standout games in that Simple series, and some of them got their own releases in North America, 
and one of them happened, uh, happened to be Oni Shambara. Uh, from what I uh, learned from my limited research, this is the third game in the series, but the first in North America, I think maybe like third or fourth in the first North America. And um, what I have to say is, uh, wow, the fan service in this game. Um, it's actually not that bad if you know you, if you lower expectations and like come on like look at this game like really uh, it's actually not that bad of a, of a hack and slash type of game you know there's like a ridiculous Japanese style story with twists and terms and all that other stuff um, and uh, ups the fan service level by dressing up your characters in the game um, but yeah, um, I actually kind of like it. It's alright. Like, it's a good, like, solid, like, 6 out of 10 type of game. Like, pretty solid 6 out of 10. Like, if you're, if you have no other game to play, and you want to play something that's really unique and different, then yeah, the Power is alright. So, I know that they just recently uh, released a PS4 like uh, version or like a new sequel on PS4 um, which has like fruit as costumes or something so yeah though so those are all the uh, the physical games I got um, out of all these uh, I think like Dr. Mario, Donkey Kong Country uh, 2 and like uh, Tennis Snowboarding, Lost Planet uh, those games were probably the highlights of uh, what I got here but now uh, we will get into the Steam games that I just recently got. So as for the digital games that I gotten, um, I managed to get not one, but two Humble Bundles this month. Uh, I managed to get the Indie Humble Bundle 15 and also the Capcom Humble Bundle. So uh, I managed to get uh, with the Indie Humble Bundle 15. Uh, the games were, Sir, You Are Being Haunted, Cube Director's Cut, Deponia, Chaos on Deponia, and Goodbye uh, Deponia, Skullgirls, uh, Planetary Annihilation, Exenonauts, Gone Home, and Gang Beasts. So, it's awesome. Uh, and then I also realized that I had leftover games that I didn't renew or use the Steam code from my past Humble Bundles. So, there was a Sega Humble Bundle that I didn't renew the codes for uh, Sonic Generations and Viking Battle for Asgard, so I, I'm actually get those games back. And then for the Capcom Humble Bundle, uh, I got all of the package there, which includes Strider, Resident Evil Revelations 2 Episode 1, uh, Lost Planet 3, Bionic Commando Rearmed, Resident Evil Revelations, DMC, Devil May Cry, uh, Resident Evil 5, Ultra Street Fighter 4 and Remember Me. And also, I gave my friend Resident Evil 4 uh, on Steam uh, because I already had the game uh, prior to purchasing uh, the Capcom Humble Bundle. And I'm really happy that the Capcom Humble Bundle happened because these are some of the games I I'm really excited to actually play. Now, especially with Resident Evil Revelations, is a game that I really wanted to play. I originally wanted to get it on like the Wii U or something. But, yeah, I have it on Steam now, so it's great. So, there you have it. Uh, these are all the games I got in the month of October 2015. Um, so, some of the games here are not, like, the super, like, rare type of games. Or, not rare, but also, like, super sought after. Uh, unless if you want to count uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 and Dr. Mario 64. Um, you know, most of these games are, you know, not that sought after or expensive and I didn't even get any new games uh, for this month but hey you know what? I like all these games they are really cool some of them are like surprises that I actually get like Dog's Life and the Xbox wrestling games and even Oni Chanabara actually being somewhat entertaining so uh, yeah so again this is me T-Dude here thanks for watching and I'll see you next time